education is impacted severely. So what can we do in today's environment? So I invited one of my dear friends, Omang Jain. He's an IIT Delhi alum. He was running one of the largest e-learning platform called Zovio. So he understands technology from learning perspective. I thought it would be a good idea. I bring him in and we talk about how the learning should be in future. Omang, welcome to our show. Uh, nice to be here, Sanjeev. Thanks for inviting me. So Omang, my first question for you is, do you have a confession for our audience? I think you need to ask that question for my wife. She'll have a whole list of confessions I need to make. So I have, um, you know, in our house, uh, whenever we're trying to pick a restaurant, that's always a project. I mean, I make it a project because I can never choose, first of all, which cuisine to go to. And then second, you know, which restaurant to go to. And, uh, you know, even after we make a choice, till we are at the table, I'll keep, you know, rethinking, re-asking, and it gets, you know, a little frustrating for my family. So For everyone. Yeah. So, Oman, uh, we are constant learner. To me, education is so important, but a lot of time when we talk about education, it's become complicated. When we talk about education, it sounds like it's a structured education. And when we talk about learning, we talk about exponential learning, because in the end, it's all about learning. So what is your take on exponential learning? What it means to you? Well, I think a uh, couple of thoughts that come to mind when you're thinking of exponential learning. So one can be from, uh, from my perspective, right? Um, as I have uh, grown older, I've learned a lot. And I think one thing I'm, I've also learned a lot is that there's a lot more that, that I don't know. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's always uh, humbling to you know, see where the world is, how fast we are understanding the world and how fast our thinking is changing on, uh, you know, on how the world works, how we as humans work, uh, how technology works and all those things, right? And it's just hard to keep up with all, with all of that information that comes our way. Uh, there's a reason why we are in the information age. Um, so that's, to me, that's, you know, there's always exponential learning from a person's perspective to have to be had. I think the other pieces, uh, we're also dealing with now more people interested in learning. You know, if you go, you know, 100 years back, maybe 200 years back, there was not enough people who wanted to learn or were going through the school or education system. Maybe see. that was the excess issue. The challenge was, is when you and me were growing up, we didn't have really the internet. We didn't even have things like Google. We didn't have all the infrastructure required. And we used to go and talk to people. Yeah, no, and again, that's why it's interesting, right? When we started as humans, we were only talking and that's how we used to pass information. And it was a very limited set. And in today's world, uh, doesn't matter where you're from, which language you're from, you know, there's different modalities available for you to create content, create your stories, share content. And that's basically exploding and increasing, right? You look at podcasts, it's like the production of po podcasts is like double, uh, dubbing every year. Uh, video content is um, again in the same, same area. And it's just hard for people to figure out what is that they are interested in. And it's, you know, you can basically take any one item and, you know, go down a deep rabbit hole, if you will, in that area and still, so, you know. So I'm going to stop you here, uh, Oman, when we talk about rabbit hole. So there are two things I remember uh, growing up and especially my time in IIT. When I was reading these uh, masters and PhD thesis, I learned so much. It was very well structured, of course, but 90% of that was not relevant to that paper or that uh, information I was looking for. But I was in the process of learning a lot. Now, if I go to Google, the information is served to me is very structured because they know exactly who I am. They know exactly what I want to read. And when we talk about learning, I find learning, when we talk about exponential learning, it's not linear. The learning really happen in, with collaboration, unstructured learning, I, with collaboration, create a phenomenal environment for uh, all of us and uh, the kids. Do you agree with that? 
Uh, no, totally agree with that. Uh, so again, I think you're talking about reading a lot of theses, right? In today's world, you don't need to re probably even read the entire thesis to understand the content because there's only like maybe 5% or 10% that you're really looking out for. And we live in a world where computers, AI and ML are basically serving that level of content and essentially acting like, you know, our personal teachers on an ongoing basis, right? But don't you see that as a problem? I see, I don't think that's a problem because there is see, the content that was there to learn has exploded in the last 20 years. There is no way as humans that we could ever keep up with it, right? And uh, in, and that's why I'm glad we have, you know, the Google to the world and, you know, the digitization of the content to keep us, keep us sane and keep us understanding, you know, what is relevant to us. I, I don't think that's a problem. I think the problem, I think what you're trying to probably refer to is your AI feeds you content and news that you are interested in. You don't get right. to see the other perspective. I think that's the world we're living in today. That you know, the answer to that is also AI, right? You can, if you know that this is the bias you're creating, you can actually start figuring out how to unbias that and start feeding the opposite side of the news. Uh, we there's no incentives to do that in today's world, but um, you know, as the world changes and things change. Uh, we can solve for if you if if you want to. Um, so and let's I go back to IIT, uh, Oman, because uh, see, you know, most of our audience, not most, actually, every single audience we have are very smart, mostly from Silicon Valley, and they're very very intelligent people, and they have constant desire to learn. That's the only reason they're watching our show. America spent close to three trillion dollars a year on education. That's almost I will say 10 to 15% of our GDP, which is a large number. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about institutions like IIT. We produce unbelievable engineers, unbelievable people there. However, I felt that current infrastructure we have or the way we teach our next generation is not enough or it's not design for the future. Like for example, now we need more interdisciplinary skills. We need much more collaboration. And what I see it is more isolation. So how do we solve that in a virtual world? I agree with what you're saying. I think uh, growing up or going through the IIT system, it was, uh, I think what I took from it was how to learn, right? And have been learning ever since. Um, how we learn has changed, but our desire and passion to learn has not. And I think that's, that's what is important. And how do you get that kind of passion instilled in a person from the beginning, I think becomes key to success. The question obviously is, are degrees going to be relevant in the future? I, I don't know the answer, but the world is definitely changing and um, getting those skills that are right for the employment becomes you know, key to success in a lot of cases. In the IITs, and again, I think one of the things that we were learning or where I thought we, uh, we see the isolation. So I did my uh, bachelor's in textiles. So I, it was a interesting area for me because we were actually working on material sciences, uh, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, electronical engineering, computer sciences all coming together to solve a problem. That's the world we're living in today, where multidisciplinary approach is needed to bring people together, to bring various ideas together and create the next level of ecosystem. That's the next level of innovation uh, for us. Uh, in the online world, it gets tough. And I don't think you can find the answers in the online world. You need, you need places where you are able to bring people together. Our learning needs to change. It should not be we are in the same industrial style classroom, everybody exactly. coming together, listening to a lecture and doing your homework. And that's how you're doing it. You know, it needs to change to potentially uh, where a lot of the, the online curriculums are already moving to is you are given something, you're doing a self, self study, you are learning the content and now you're coming together to work on projects or apply those skills. The practical nature of, I, of applying those skills is where I think we'll see a lot more innovation happening in the future state. A lot of curriculums changing because in the end, it's the experience 
Um, so so coming to back to the curriculum, Uman, since you're talking about curriculum, mm -hmm. we both understand the importance of interdisciplinary skills. So our kids and the, the future generation need very different kind of exposure. For example, now we are talking about putting the man on the Mars. We are talking about a space travel as real. Uh, and personally, I'm very excited because now I know rest of the world is really bashing all these amazing people. Because to me, it's like going to India in one hour mm -hmm. because I don't have the gravity stuck to me. So I can just go to space and come down. And it's, it's a very different world. We talk about the Starlink project. It's, it's just going to open a plethora of opportunities for all of us, which I think humanity is not able to understand or comprehend at this point of time, in my opinion. But coming back to that is how do we train our next generation for careers like that, where they think an exponential term, not linear term. They think that all these things are possible. And space travel is one of those. Um, we can talk about food, we can talk about even education, we can talk about sustainability. Every single area is ripe for major disruption. Like, I don't know if you have heard in Dubai, they created artificial rain. Can you believe that using drones? Using drones, so nothing expensive, nothing crazy. I have heard about drawing the clouds in some Olympic games. I think uh, we as humans are very creative, right? We, uh, and the skills we need to teach are not mechanical engineering. It's how to be creative, right. how to be collaborative, and how to have that passion to you know think outside the box. Uh, I, I, again, I was uh, going through my feed in LinkedIn today and uh, one of the feed was about uh, Jeff Bezos talking to somebody and saying 20 years back that uh, he would like to s solve the space problem, but he thought it was really, really hard. But I think uh, just going back to what you were saying, right, our future of work is going to change. How do we instill in people, not like what the current is, right, but how to keep learning, keep growing, is is the key to success and that's you know uh that's unfortunately not in the engineering books or the technology books or the online right it's how do you uh, train your mind to be constantly on that lookout and constantly be hungry i think is is what we need to focus on let's go back to our iit and talk about the environment because i'm constantly talking to them and since i'm on the board here it's very important for us I personally believe the relevance of the institutions like IIT Stanford has gone up, not going down. The challenge is how do they evolve? Because we all know that systematic thinking we learn from there, that access to infrastructure we got, access to even amazing kids who were like beating us every single day that how to get A grade. It's like first among equals. So that environment is very hard to create. How do you see IITs can solve that problem? I, I think IITs in today's world solve that problem by basically uh, going through a rigorous uh, test of, you know, getting the best of the best. And, uh, you know, that's how you're kind of solving for that problem. I think the question in my mind is, how do you solve that problem for a, in an exponential way? How do you install yeah. that in people uh, and what and can you do something in the curriculum to to instill that instill that behavior? And again, I think that's fair. I think it need they, the curriculum needs to change to be much more engaging. A lot more use of let's say uh, virtual reality, things that can be taught in you know probably a five minute virtual reality video where people are able to do things is um, the is probably like ten to fifteen different lectures that need to be taken to understand that content, right? So moving away from lectures to um, to basically self-enabling people to do these kind of contents, use artificial reality, use virtual reality to experience it, right? It's experience that creates um, the curiosity in our mind. So make us curious by, or make the students curious by giving them different experiences, not just the textbook learning I think becomes critical to success. The more visual experiences, more what visual. I'm hearing is more experiential learning, not just book learning. You see the formula, but what it does for you, that is more relevant. We, we learn by our, by looking at things, by listening to things, by touching things, right? Those are the senses that we are given to, to 
to learn and experience. And most of our current experiences only, you know, you know, either listening or reading. And I think there is much more technology available to create content that is much more engaging to help uh, help you be curious and engaged in your studies. Because once you're engaged, you get that hook, right? And then you then you get your creative juices flowing, and that's I think that's the key to success. Uh, similarly, I think I was, you already answered the question for our audience that if they want to start a company, it's a perfect opportunity if you can use more than two senses as Uman talks about, it's a game changer. And if you can use all five, it's just, you have a home run. You have a next level of Amazon or next IID or next strength book. Am I right, Uman? I, I, I think so. And also uh, to me, it's understanding how different people learn differently, right? When you think of exponential learning, you need to be able to create content which can appeal to somebody who learns visually to somebody who's, you know, by touching it, you need to be able to give them content in, in the way they understand it. And I think once with technology, and it's easy to scale that, right, in today's world. So, so that's how you get so, the experience of learning. So, Umang, I don't know how you think about it, but I personally think we are the product or we are here because of the quality education we have received. That is because of the access. There are 7.8 billion people. We are expecting our global population will be 10 billion people. Access to education or information is far more important and relevant today. So should institutions like IITs just open source their classrooms so people can study, learn, understand? They don't have to give degree. I get that degree is very different, very prestigious, very important, whatever it is. But because I believe the pro biggest problem we have even in the world of YouTube and in the world of Google is access to quality content. So totally agree. Access to quality content is an issue. Uh, I think uh, is the an does the answer lie in open, making it open source? I'm not sure because in the end, uh, I think human behavior is driven by incentives. And if you don't have the right incentives tied to it, it doesn't work, it doesn't scale, it doesn't go exponential. Um, so I'm not sure if open sourcing it is, a, is the right way to go about it, but I'm sure there are a lot more other creative minds who can figure out how to open source it and align the right incentive Incentivize. Yeah. for people to create the right content. Because again, creating co the right kind of content today is not just a person going and writing a book, right? Yeah. It becomes a lot more involved if you're now trying to create, you know, the right video graphics or audio graphics or podcasts to make it right engagement. Yeah, to make it engaging and you know, it's almost like making a movie, right? Uh, but more educational in in nature. So how do you align those incentives and then make it exponential for people to to learn that? Do you have any specific message for our audience? What you would like them to do? if they want to be on the journey of an exponential learning? I think go out and experiment, be there, go out, try new things. You never know what you may like, what you may not like. And that's, uh, I think that's where you, you find your innovation, you find your inspiration. Uh, people talk about, you know, coming up with uh, billion dollar ideas. They are not gonna come without trying, right? You have yeah. to grow, you have to learn, you have to talk to people and see and, you know, understand their problems and see if you can come up with a creative way to solve them. It's But if we can make education expand where we are using more senses than just two, it can be a game changer. And I do agree with Umang because when we learn, we learn through stories, we learn through visual. We don't really remember text. Uh, we remember everything in our memory is pretty much a map. And if you are not sure about it, uh, go and check another friend of mine, Chester Center. He talks about it every single day, how to remember the people's name and everything. So in reality, it is all visual. But once again, Umang, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Sanjeev. It was always a pleasure talking to you.